And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game called Serpent Stones. Now, Serpent Stones is a game that I previously did a preview for, so take that into account. Serpent Stones is a two-player game that is based on a mysterious rediscovered 600-year-old Aztec board game. Basically, there is a, you're fighting on temple stones and using your warriors to reach and capture your opponent's temple stones. This is essentially an abstract strategy game where you're trying to manipulate cards on a board. Let me show you how. Okay, here is the board. Now the board actually is this like cloth, it's like this nice handkerchief style or this cloth here. It's actually a pretty good quality and I actually like this type of board. I don't know how much these boards cost, but they lay flat unlike, you know, like a paper board and they also have a pretty good feel and I mean it, it looks sharp. Each player is going to have some temple stones. You know, what you're trying to do in this game is you're trying to capture temple stones of your opponents. You're going to be doing that by utilizing this common deck. Each player is going to play one of the factions. And what you're going to be basically doing over the course of the game is you are going to play uh, a, a dude. This is an eagle warrior, and you can see on the eagle faction. So you play one of these guys on your side. And then as the game progresses, you're going to continue to play these warriors. And it doesn't really matter if they're eagle warriors or if they're jaguar warriors. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get to that middle section. It doesn't really matter how I get there. I mean, as long as I'm adjacent to other guys. And it's possible as the game progresses, see, and then if I can place one here, boom, then I'll capture one of those stones and put it on my side. As the game progresses, it's possible that maybe this guy gets taken out of the picture. At that point, these guys cannot be used until they're reattached. You know, maybe I have to go around this way because the, my opponent is going to be playing them back towards me. He's going to be playing warriors this way. Now, on a turn, players are going to draw a card and then play a card. And many times, the cards you're going to play are going to be warriors, and you simply place the arrows face up like I just showed you. But you're also going to be playing attack cards. There are two different types of attack cards. You can see there's these red cards and then the blue ones. The red ones are attacks, and the blue ones are capture. So let's say I play this beetle stag attack card and so I play this and I have to pick someone who's adjacent to me and then basically they're killed. They're removed from the board. A capture card will instead flip them around. Now many of the cards, like you can see this card here, show a pattern on them. You'll see that this pattern has two cards in a row like that. So if I play that card, I'm actually able to use this card to make both of these guys turn around like this, which is a really a great coup for me in that situation. And there's lots of different patterns on the cards. Each of these cards has, you know, different kinds of attacks. Here we have the owl attack. By the way, this red, I'm sorry, it's they're called strikes. This red thing is just really hard to read on these cards. Um, here we have the coyote capture. And here we have the bat capture. And they're named different things. But the captures turn the enemy cards around while the strikes remove them from the board. Now there are three different... Teoto cards that you're supposed to play and when you play them the rules say you have to say their name out loud So fortunately they made the names easy like for example this guy's Quetzalcoatl Now at least the huh, blah, at least the rule book tells you how to do that What he lets you do when you play him is you get to you get an extra card so your hand size grows That's good because there's a lot of these guys. These are Tezcatlipoca um, these guys uh, force you to discard a card, at, or your opponent, and you know you do that enough and you make their hand go down to nothing. That's one of the ways to win the game. Finally, we have Huitzilopochtli, which is nothing like it looks. Goodness. Anyhow, that one lets you sacrifice a card. Now, sacrificing a card, you have a spot down here. Basically, when you sacrifice a card and this takes two cards out of your deck, so you have to be careful when you use these, but they're powerful because you can play a card here. And in fact, you can double sacrifice the card to play another card here. And in the future, on your next turn, actually, 
you can use this card before your cards. You can play two cards in a row. Or you can do this one and play, if, if you've sacrificed twice in a row, you can play three cards in a row. So that's the basic game. You're going to keep going and attacking when you can play someone here until you get three other zones and you win or until you make your opponent run out of the cards in their deck. There's an intermediate game where you can only capture people who are from your team and you can only uh, strike and destroy people from the opposing team. Um, what I mean by that is you can only capture people who are your color. So I would only be able to capture yellow ones if I was a yellow player. And you can only kill people of the opposite color. Um, I, you know, I don't... That just made the game harder, I suppose. And then there's even an advanced play game. And then the, the game comes with a little uh, expansion. It's... Uh, what's the expansion called? It's called The End of the Fifth Sun. And this one just adds some more cards. It has some cards that you can play to stop the other person from sacrificing. It has some where you can move warriors. It has a couple extra strikes, including this eagle strike, which takes out five cards. And then it has these skull wall cards, which allow you to put these skull walls, which are like the thickest tiles I've ever seen, places on the board to block different spots. So anyhow, that's about it. Now, at the beginning, I said that this was an abstract game. But boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, did they try to inject theme into this. They injected theme into this to the point where it's annoying because you can't remember what any of the words mean. They keep saying stone, 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 and you're like, what's a stone? Oh, it's a space on the board. And they, and the fact that they make you say Quetzalcoatl or whatever, I'm not even trying anymore. I mean, I know people get at me for pronunciation, but I challenge you to just rattle those off without looking at them all the time. The dumb rule. You have to say them out loud. If you don't say it, the card effect doesn't happen. And this whole thing about sacrifice and the ancient Aztecs, and there's so much of that in the rule book, and I guess I'll give them props for trying, but it comes across more annoying than it does not. The game is just getting cards across the board. Killing cards, making cards flip around. And it's boring. Oh, I just didn't like this game at all. It, I'm, I, you know what? I keep running into people who tell me that they really enjoy it, that they like this whole card interplay and flipping around, but for me, it's just one big yawn fest. You get your cards, you try and make them go across the board. The fastest line between two points is a straight line. It's, you just go, and then you play a card that you might get lucky and turn your guys around, and then he plays a card, ha ha, and turns them back around, and then I play... Uh, this and make you lose a card from your hand, which doesn't really matter unless you've used a lot. Now the sacrifice mechanism is neat And in fact, I think this whole game would have been improved if they had taken the sacrifice card thing and thrown it out of the deck And just said you can sacrifice any card in your hand to put a card down. Next turn you can play two cards in a row But that makes it dangerous the more you do that because you can go do do which is great That's fun to do but there have been games I played where I never got a sacrifice card Which is really annoying and stupid but, I mean, the sacrifice thing is, is risky because it lets you play one, two, or maybe even three actions in a row, but at the risk of making your hand much smaller by doing so, and then your opponent can play cards and make your hand get smaller, and in fact make you lose that way. That would have been a much more interesting game. As it is, the game is ah, very forgettable for me. I give them props on the artwork and theme. They really tried to inject it into this, into an essentially themeless game. This whole sacrifice and, and gods and, and Aztec warriors fighting is basically, I mean, think of it, you know, like, here, hey, turn to our side. Yes, sir, turn around. I mean, how is that thematic at all? But anyhow, but I understand it. You know, you're trying to go across and flip cards and stuff. Uh, some people are going to like this, and it's in a very nice presentation, like I said, like the board and all, but just really fell flat for me. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.